Hey, what's up everyone? Dallas at Stinky Fab Racing here. Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different in that I'm not installing any of our parts. I'm actually installing Ford parts. Uh, behind me, we've got my two-door 2022 Bronco Wildtrak up on the lift. Uh, those of you that are familiar with all the options out there know that Wildtrak does not come with a electronic sway bar disconnect. The only one that does come with it is Badlands. Now, originally we ordered Badlands because I wanted the sway bar disconnect. Uh, Ford took 19 months to build that thing. <laughs> we have it now. I have Badlands as well. Uh, but I bought this thing in the meantime, and really the only option that it didn't come with was this sway bar disconnect. Now, I'm sure a lot of people are going to ask, well, why don't you just put manual disconnects on there? They're cheap, they're easy. Uh, I've got a lot of years working on Jeeps. Most of my Jeeps have had sway bar disconnects on them. Some of them have been running Curry Anti-Rox. That's another fantastic setup. Uh, or I guess I should correct myself. Now it's Rock Jock. I go way back to the, uh, the Curry days. Uh, I'm actually a Rock Jock dealer. We use all their parts in our suspension kits, suspension links. Um, fantastic products. Um, I would highly recommend. I've run the Anti-Rock on a lot of things and love it. Uh, but I wanted to try out the electronic disconnect. Um, I've had the manual disconnects on all sorts of things, like I said, and yeah, they get the job done, but you got to get out, dig underneath the vehicle on an IFS like the Bronco. You're tucking your head down the wheel well. They're hard to get at. You know, even Jeeps where they're right up on the front of the vehicle, they're a pain. You're not parked on perfectly flat ground when you go to reconnect they don't like to reconnect they're they're just a pain i love the idea of being able to push a button that's why i ordered a bronco with the disconnect unfortunately i didn't get that so went online found the part i'll put the part number in the description uh, i've been doing a fair amount of research i'm not going to claim to be an expert here but uh what i do know you don't need anything extra to run this thing. Uh, it's fully self-contained. Uh, it's not air actuated like some of the other systems where you need an air compressor or some kind of pump. Um, it's all electronic. You just need power to the right ports. Um, again, Wildtrak doesn't have the, the uh, programming in the computer for it. It also doesn't have the button on the dash. Um, there may be ways to add the button, do the computer programming, make the thing think it's a Badlands even. Um, I don't know, that's not my plan. Um, my plan is simply to wire this thing up to the auxiliary switches. Um, to me, I think that's actually the best way because that's gonna enable me to disconnect this thing whenever I want, bypass all the computer nannies, won't reconnect at 20 mile an hour or anything like that. If I want to go bombing through the desert without a sway bar connected, I can do that. Just flip the switch. So that's the way I'm planning on doing it. Not going to tell you to do it that way or do it any other way. Um, use your best judgment there. Uh, that's just the way I'm going to do it. And, um, you know, like I said, I'm not an expert, but I bought the parts and I'm going to figure it out. So let's get started. All right, so first things first, as you can see on here, I've got the full set of SFR skid plates. Uh, this transmission skid plate is gonna need to be removed. Uh, you'll notice this one is completely flat. This is uh, one of our prototype parts that we made. Uh, this would not fit with that disconnect because uh, it hangs a little bit below here. Um, so our our next version of the skid plate actually has a little drop down in there. Uh, when we designed the skids here, we designed them to have absolute maximum ground clearance everywhere you can. A lot of people are doing big belly skids that sit even lower than these uh, cross member braces. And it just makes the entire belly of the vehicle that much lower and that much more likely to hang you up. Um, our thought is I'd rather uh, have everything tucked up as high as possible so I don't even need the skid plate in the first place for that rock that isn't quite that high. 
unfortunately we do have to drop it down a little bit so first things first here we're gonna take off the skid plate and then get working on you can see where these uh, end links for the sway bar are now if you wanted to do manual sway bar disconnects this is the piece that you'd be disconnecting or replacing and as you can see you know it's not too hard to get in there with the thing up in the air but you know if you're on the ground you got to get back in that wheel well to access that if it's muddy and dirty well you're going to end up muddy and dirty as well and you know just not that much fun i'd much rather just push a button maybe i'm getting old maybe i'm lazy but that's what i want so we're going to unbolt those uh, end links on both sides and then we'll work on getting the sway bar all right looks like the mounting bolts for the sway bar are 18 millimeter find a wrench for that She comes just to try and give a little closer view of that end link taking the nut off just slide it out maybe hard to see in there but the end of that uh, threaded shank let's see if I can bend it where there's light there's a hex in there now these are lock nuts and I'm sure Ford is gonna say these are one-time use as you start to loosen them up that, uh, that threaded shank is just going to start spinning in the sway bar arm. But they were nice. They give us a hex there to uh, put an Allen key in, hold it in place, and you can loosen it on up. All right, out the old and with the new. I'm trying to do this so it landed. All right, so there it is, all installed. Pretty straightforward, just uh, the two end links and the four mounting bolts that goes in just like the uh, just like the standard bar. Really uh, kind of a piece of cake on that side of things. As you can see, the wiring harness is hanging there. I just need to uh, go through the wires, figure out which ones go to the solenoids, and wire them up to the switch, and we'll see how it goes. 
Alright, so it's been quite a while since I in physically installed the uh, sway bar. Uh, things got busy around the shop and as with uh, most personal projects, got set aside for uh, company projects like designing a new rear bumper and finishing skid plates and suspension links and a whole lot of products that are uh, on the stinkyfab.com website now. But uh, I've finally got a little bit of time, and so I'm going to work on actually getting that sway bar wired up, because for a while now I've been driving it, and it's just been acting like a stock sway bar, except more expensive. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, now the sway bar comes with a, a small wiring harness section that links together the uh, sensors as well as the solenoids. and kind of runs across the cross member. And uh, it's really nice, it, it has uh, the little clips in it so it'll snap into the cross member on the frame. Um, and then the, it's got the large connector at the end which also snaps into a, a spot on the frame. And what you can do is cut that connector off the end and wire directly from there. I wanted to do it a little bit more cleanly, a uh, little, little closer to factory even though this isn't going to be a full factory install because I'm, I'm going to be using the uh, auxiliary switches. But uh, I went on eBay, found a place there that's selling, this is the matching connector that, uh, that will plug into the factory connector at the sway bar so that I'm not chopping any wires up or anything like that. Uh, so this one, we're only actually going to need four of the wires out of this. The rest of them we'll just clip off and, uh, and heat shrink them out of the way. Uh, we're not going to be using any of the sensors because uh, they're just there to tell the computer whether or not the uh, sway bar is engaged, disengaged, and kind of give some feedback for the error uh, coding system. Uh, we're not using any of that. All we're doing is turning it on and off with power. Um, the computer's not even going to know it's there. So we're just concerned with the power and ground for the solenoids. The rest of them aren't going to get used. But uh, I will show you that, and I'll also put a link in the description below uh, for where you can get this plug if you want to do the same thing. It was pretty inexpensive. I think it was around $20. Um, yeah, so let's get started. So here's that wiring harness I was talking about. Clips into the, the uh, frame rails, got all these nice little clips. And then here's the connector that we're going to be plugging into. This one actually fits right up in here and it's got a little little tab that holds it in place. I'm not going to put it in there just yet because I'm not ready to, but it will be held firmly in place. And then we've got to run the wiring up and into the engine bay and uh, make sure we can route it around where it's not going to get melted. As you can see, there's a lot of uh, heat protection on everything up in here. It's because uh, the catalytic converter is right there, and then up higher there's your turbo, and those things both produce a ton of heat. So we're going to have to protect that wiring. Uh, we'll probably try and run it with some other wires and uh, keep everything wrapped up. All right, so now it's time to do the wiring. I don't know how easy this is going to be to film or uh, how it's going to come out, but uh, this is our connector. I've got uh, some wiring here. Uh, I actually pulled this out of a, uh, a lighting kit. Mainly just used this wire because it was the right size and it's got a nice wrapping over the lead so when I uh, tie it up through the engine bay it should, should look nice and neat. Um, only need two lines. Uh, power and ground. On this connector here, we've got all these wires. Most of them we're not using, as I mentioned before. Um, I'll get a little detailed here. So, looking at it from the back, if you're looking at the connector going towards the vehicle, so the first wire and the third one on top, those are going to be your positives, and then the second one and the fourth one are your negatives. We're just going to tie these together and then uh, splice them onto to our wires there. The rest of these 
we do not use. I'm gonna clip these off and just heat shrink them up out of the way. And we'll be done. And then you also see here, this is a fire sleeve. Uh, when we're running up along the frame there, right next to the exhaust, uh, next to the turbo, um, I want to try and protect all this so it doesn't melt, doesn't short out. And I had a bunch of this fire sleeve around. This stuff's good for, I don't know, a couple thousand degrees or something like that. I mean, it's some crazy temperature. Um, I've, I have a bunch of it from race cars I built in the past. And uh, I had it, so I'm going to use it because no reason not to. So I'm going to go ahead and start connecting up these wires. All right, so I got our wires crimped together and uh, went ahead and did the heat shrink to seal it all up. I also heat shrinked all the excess wires together in a little bundle. Measured out my fire sleeve. I'm just going to go ahead and pull it all the way over everything. We can go put this in the Bronco and uh, start getting this thing buttoned up. All right, so now obviously we're under the hood of the Bronco and the uh, connector comes up on the passenger side so you can see down in there you can see the orange uh, fire sleeve all the way at the bottom you can kind of see where the connector is uh, there's a brake line down there that I just kind of followed that up and zip tied to it seemed like a good place to uh, attach to so it can't move around too much kept it as far away from the exhaust and the turbo as I could then uh, it comes up here. I got some lights I'm wiring at the same time, so there's a couple of bundles of wires here. And then just ran across over to the other side, because in this corner is where we're going to tie in all those wires that are hanging out there. Those are the uh, factory wiring for the auxiliary switches. So I'm going to be tapping into one of those to uh, use for now it's time to get our transmission skid in here and you'll see that it overlaps on top of both the engine skid and the uh, transfer case skid plate there All right, so I uh, went ahead and got everything all connected. Uh, you see that yellow wire there is the one off of auxiliary switch number one. That's the one we tied into for the sway bar. And then uh, as it happens, there's all these grounds that are right on the cowling. Really nice and convenient there to uh, provide the ground. And while I was in there, I also wired in uh, all my lights, which are a whole separate project. So now everything's all connected and we are ready to go test it out. Thanks a lot for watching everyone. Uh, be sure to check out stinkyfab.com to see all the new and exciting stuff we got coming out. We got a lot of new products coming out these days and uh, hope to see you all on the trail soon.